and welcome to Witchy Woman Podcast. I am your host, Danae Sweet, and this is episode 25. Oh my god, we are a quarter of the way to 100 episodes. That feels so cool. <laughs> I also want to send a big, giant thank you to every listener. Um, we hit 5,000 downloads at some point last week, and that just blew my freaking mind, right? So I want to thank everybody for actually listening to me babble on about shit. (laughs) Today, I have a really cool interview with Althea Mitchell. She does some really cool emotional and energetic healing with a modality called the emotional, the emotion code. This episode was transformational for me. We talked a lot about what it is and we talked about some sessions that she did with me. And then she talked to me more about, um, about some things that I needed to hear. So I I did have some huge transformational realizations just in this uh, interview that I had with her. So I am so grateful for her. And I hope that you guys um, can take something away from this this interview. And if you want to contact her, I will have all of the contact information in the show notes. And and, uh, she does give you that at the end of the interview. But anyway, without further ado, let's get on to that interview. Okay, so I have some really fun questions, and they're nothing you have to think too hard about. I just think that they're fun to do at the beginning of an interview. <laughs> okay. Okay. Perfect. So, on a scale of 1 to 10, how weird do you rate yourself? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness sakes. Okay, well, definitely a high 9. Okay, perfect. Sa- same. I bounce between like a 9 and a 10, kind of depending on what day it is. Uh huh. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Mayo or Miracle Whip? Oh, mayo. Okay. Definitely mayonnaise. Oh my gosh. See, and I love all food, so I um, I will eat either. Oh, Oh. I would almost need Mayo Anonymous. Really? (laughs) (laughs) See, I put Miracle Whip on pizza. My husband thought that was the weirdest shit he had ever seen until he tried it. He was like, you know what? That ain't too bad. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> I would probably try it with mayo. See, it's good. I probably would. <laughs> it sounds so gross, but it's so good. <laughs> okay, here's a different one. Okay, so if you could be any other profession in, like, if money didn't matter and time and education didn't matter, what would you be? <laughs> Honestly, um, I would. I would gladly be able to take in and step into the role of John of God. Oh, how cool. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. I le- He, okay, so does he do those, I know there was some controversy about all that, but didn't he do those beautiful crystal beds and the healings and all that stuff? You know, I do believe that he did. Now, of course, I've just barely started scratching the surface with him, mm-hmm. but honestly, the way he goes about nurturing people, I think that is what Mm -hmm. attracts me the most. Oh, yeah. So that, you know, that inhibition, there's no hold bars. It's just, this is what it is, and that's, I think, the best part. Aw, that's awesome. (laughs) See, I love it when I can ask that question and people still stay in that same, I mean, you do something healing now, and even if you could do anything else, you'd still, you know, do healing work. So I think that's awesome. Definitely. <laughs> okay, what's the weirdest superstition that you believe in, if you believe in any? Oh, let's see. The weirdest one mm-hmm. um, was that if you get raindrops on your belly, you get pregnant. <laughs> oh, my God. That's awesome. Oh, my God. My sisters, of course, um, being the youngest, I got to see a lot of my sisters, um, of course, have their children. Oh, yeah. And everything like that. So, and, you know, as a little kid, you know, time is not a, you know, a real strong personality. Well, yeah. And so it always seemed like they were pregnant. And when I asked, they were like, oh, well, I went out into the rain and showed my belly and that's how I got pregnant. I'm like, oh. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's awesome. Oh, we told my little brother, well, me and some other cousins, we, we told my, I'm six years older than my little brother, so he was really little. We were eating watermelon, and I know it's a common one, but we told him that if he eats the seeds, we saw him eat some of the seeds. We're like, you know that you're going to grow a, a watermelon in your belly, and that the vines come out your ears. And he was like, oh my God. 
Like, he was traumatized. <laughs> I, well, that's always a fun one. Oh, to, God. To see that sheer panic of like, that oh. kind of sounds true, but I don't know if I believe it. Yep. Our, my poor brother, we tormented him. We told him, so he hated white milk, like hated it. He refused to eat just plain milk. He would drink like chocolate milk, but we told him he'd never grow like big and strong if he didn't drink white milk. And my sister and I were babysitting him one time. We we're like, you better drink it or you're just never going to get big. He would drink it and then throw up and he would try to keep it down and we were laughing so hard. Oh, it's we probably traumatized my brother. But <laughs> well, it probably served him right. Oh time. my god! Oh my gosh! Yeah, he got back at us in our later years. I've been shot by BB guns and rocks p- pelted at my head. So he definitely got even eventually. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Oh, yes, it was crazy. never a boring household ever. <laughs> I get that. Yes. So, I would love to know how you got into being a healer and how you got into this particular niche that you do. Okay. Well, I will tell you, my mother, I am the youngest of 15 children. Holy smokes. Right. And, (laughs) um, okay, so the way I was raised was very natural and holistic anyway. My mother... You know, if there was something wrong with us, she would just be like, you know, I think you need a chiropractor appointment. And uh, let me gather some eggs. We'll take you to the chiropractor. You'll be fine. Mm -hmm. And um, so she always did forms of exchange with the chiropractor. He had a large family. And so we would just go get our treatments. And, of course, you know, it always seemed to be fine. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was just like I didn't even, like we, (laughs) I didn't even know. That, that sliced bread was a thing. Really? Until I had stayed at a friend's house when I was like nine or ten years old. Oh, my Because gosh. we baked bread. You know, we, oh, wow. everything was homemade. So, yeah. So, it was really, that's kind of how I got into it. Mm-hmm. And um, so, I was raised with it. And then when I was, um, I moved to Riverton, Wyoming in 2005. And at 2008, um, I was working in the doctor's office. I really wanted to always help people, and so I decided that the best profession would be healthcare. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I was working as a CNA, and then kind of got out of the hospital bit and went into a doctor's office. And uh, one day I woke up about three o'clock in the morning with this pain underneath my right lung that was so intense I could not do anything to ease the pain. And of course, when I went to the doctor's office the next morning. Um, you could see that there was something wrong with me. And Mm -hmm. when I got my blood pressure checked, it was perfect. Hmm. They drew lab work, ran all sorts of tests. It would come back perfect. They sent me for an ultrasound, perfect. Went for an x-ray, an MRI, everything was perfect. And I'm like, obviously there is something wrong. And so um, after I went home that day, then I ended up calling a chiropractor who had done energy work on our family before and I told him what was going on and he said well he says there's a couple of things that are going on he says one he says um do you wear underwire bras (laughs) and I said yeah I do um you know I raised two kids and they sucked the life out of me well yeah (laughs) (laughs) anything to save the girls at that point yeah uh, he says, you need to stop doing that. He says, the uh, underwire bras interfere with the lymphatic system, hmm. and you have some huge blocks going on. And he says, it's also your liver. You need to drink lemon water for the pain and then deal with your anger. And hmm. so I was like, all right. So <laughs> I drank the lemon water, and within 15 minutes, I could... I had no pain. I oh could my gosh. touch my right side. I could jump. Um, I could breathe, and nothing hurt. And so I kind of was giggling. You know, I'm like, I am not an angry person. You know, I don't know what he's talking about. Right. And um, so it was about two weeks later, my youngest son, who was eight at the time, come in to me, and he's like, Mom, I can't wait to be a dad. And I'm like, really? What? Why? And he says, because then I don't have to do anything. Oh, my gosh. And so at that point, then I realized how enraged I was. Mm. Not just angry, 
I was in rage. Yeah. And um, so, of course, I'm like, okay, well, it's bedtime. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so I sat there and just thought about that, and I thought, what am I doing to myself? Mm-hmm. And I was so angry at my then-husband mm-hmm. and just was like, you know, all these thoughts of, you know, oh, you know, justification. He doesn't help. He doesn't do anything all of these kind of things, and right. I was like, wait a minute, what is my part? Mm-hmm. And so that was kind of a tough pill to swallow. And so um, I talked with one of my sisters, and she introduced me to a woman who has passed, and she did theta work. Okay. And um, I was amazed. I did a session with her. I was completely amazed at how much better I felt. Um, dealing with the emotional baggage that I didn't realize that I had been just carrying around. Right. I mean, I, you know, we grow up with stuff, events happen, you know, you get your feelings hurt, you get your heart broke, and, you know, you just find a way to go on. Mm-hmm. And um, so it was just like, you know, you just did what you could, you know, until you felt better. And uh, so it was quite amazing. And then, um, so I kind of started getting back into the emotional healing. And um, I discovered a book called Feelings Buried Alive Never Die. Hmm. And I actually got to uh, be an understudy of Carol Truman, the author of that book. Um, And it was wonderful. And when I understood that even though we have these emotional things, when we are not taught to deal with them properly, they actually start manifesting physically in the body. Oh, for sure. And yeah, and so it was quite amazing. So working at the doctor's office, I was able to read the diagnosis when they would come out from seeing the doctor, and then, of course, I'd run home and look (laughs) in my book, and that would be exactly the thing that we were discussing before they went and seen the doctor, was exactly that. And I was like, oh my gosh, that is amazing and so interesting. Mm -hmm. And um, so as I started healing, then I'm like, well, it's only natural to start helping others. And um, so I got into oracle card readings, I got into Theta, I got into um, just all sorts of different things. And um, I started doing some energy work that I had learned from the chiropractor that my mother had always taken us to. And um, it was just really unique, just the differences in the body, just getting rid of even just negative energy. Oh, yeah. And so then I uh, went down to Utah and went to a holistic event down there where they were introducing the emotion code, body code, by Bradley Nelson. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and um, so when I heard of that, I was kind of rejected it the first time, honestly. Because mm-hmm. I'm like, really? It, it, <laughs> that's too easy. That's just too easy, <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. And um, so then it was a couple of weeks later, and I actually started trying it. And I will tell you, I could not believe the difference. Mm-hmm. And so... My husband now, who is just absolutely awesome, <laughs> and of course my guinea pig for everything. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So he he kind of he was suffering from migraine headaches, mm-hmm. and um, so he started having a migraine headache, and I'm like, well, let's try the emotion code. They say it works on everything, right? And within about 15 minutes, we started releasing stuff that was attached to causing and contributing to the migraine that he was having and within about 20 minutes uh the auras had stopped there was no pressure and the migraine actually stopped oh wow that was the most amazing thing and for the rest of the day he was just kind of like i don't know what happened (laughs) (laughs) you know Mm -hmm. (laughs) my head is supposed to hurt i'm supposed to experience you know kind of a down period for about three days right and there was none of that And so I was just like, that was amazing. And so then it was just like, okay, we started doing it on everything. And um, so that is how I got started into it. That is awesome. And so that's where we're going, you know? (laughs) Yeah. No, that's awesome. How do you, how do you explain it? So it's, it's, it's trap or it's releasing trapped emotions that have manifested as physical emotion or physical issues in our body how does it work because i know okay so like in reiki i see the bioki or the trapped or blocked or imbalanced energy and reiki moves the energy releases it whatever is that the same premise uh yes 
as a matter of fact. Okay, so what happens is, is let's say that you had an event, um, and I'm going to give my example as a major event. Mm -hmm. So I was in a head-on car collision. Oh, yikes. And in the car collision, I fractured my right wrist, uh, left collarbone, Mm -hmm. lacerated my liver, liver, liver. (laughs) (laughs) and um, gave myself a concussion. Also, dang near scalped myself. Oh, my God. Yeah, from the steering wheel. So it took half of my face and set it to the middle of my head. And so there was quite some extensive damage and everything. Mm -hmm. But um, what happened was, is when I left the hospital, Mm -hmm. um, my boyfriend at the time was driving me, and I was doing fine until he hit the brakes the first time, and I just freaked out. Oh, yeah, I would too. Oh, my God. Okay, so what that is, and I didn't even learn this until almost, well, just about three, four years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, Colonel Dave Grossman is the one who elaborates on how the physical body uses muscle memory Mm -hmm. and how muscle memory is not really something that you, it's not always what you train. Sometimes a physical trauma will instantly put that muscle memory in because our subconscious, you know, is only to help us live right right and so it goes into complete survival mechanism oh my god and so what happened was is the muscle remembered that right before the accident i hit the brakes oh and my gosh. it immediately went into this like you know survival mode right and i'm like oh my gosh i don't know what that was and i apologized i'm like i'm really sorry mm-hmm. and um he's just like okay <laughs> <laughs> Right. Just don't break my windshield, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> and, uh, so when I started working and using the emotion code, so what happened was is when you do not process through the emotional side of it, which is the energy side of it, mm-hmm. that energy resides up and down in the body looking for a spot or just goes back and forth in the meridians until it finds a weakness where it can stuff itself. Oh, geez. And so what happens is, is as we age, when we have a physical trauma, if we are not dealing with the emotional parts of it, then it takes us longer to heal. It takes more recovery time because oh, of the plain fact that all that stuff starts cracking in there right. and stacking on top of each other. Oh, my God. And so what the emotion code does is identify the emotional part of it. Mm-hmm. So resentment, anger, fear, hopeless helpless, Mm -hmm. effort unreceived, bitterness, and then energetically actually removes it from the physical body. Oh, wow. That's what it does. And so it sometimes can happen to where it releases just one at a time, Mm -hmm. but the amount of work that you can do to recover from any incident is completely amazing. Mm -hmm. So now take, for example, with the car accident, when I started working on myself, then I released probably anywhere from about 15 to 75 oh, yeah. fear. Woo! And it's like, but when you think about it, it's like, well, how could you not be scared that many times? Oh, absolutely. You know? <laughs> yep. Uh, uh, yeah. Wow. And the, the reason why we get so many is because when you think about it and you wake up and you have a conversation, mm-hmm. then how many emotions do you experience in just 15 minutes oh my gosh a ton i'm a gemini so right Right. (laughs) and so now you take that times 24 hours a day Mm -hmm. seven days a week 365 days a year to how old you are and so you probably have one or two oh yeah (laughs) just a few (laughs) (laughs) so the emotion code is just a quick way to identify what it is Mm -hmm. and release it and you can work around any situation. Oh, wow. You can work around any type of memory. Mm-hmm. You can work around any type of feeling or even the physical ailments, which can then start allowing the body to actually, instead of worrying about the emotional trauma of it, mm-hmm. then it actually gets back to being able to physically repair the body. Right, right. That's so freaking cool. I, I cannot... Um... I'd never heard of this until I had met you at the metaphysical fair. And I was like, very, very intrigued. Very. I was like, oh, my God, I have to have this done. (laughs) And it is it is amazing. 
So I do want to, I want to talk about what you, your se- we did a session. We did, so you did two. I think we did one like on a Monday and then again on a Friday, right? Yes. So I thought, so while you were doing it, so the first time that you did it, I believe I was... I came here for the second time I was in the grocery store. The first time, I think I was just walking. I was just in the house doing things. I think I was actually mm-hmm. preparing for another podcast. <laughs> mm-hmm. and How funny is that? I know. And I actually could feel like I definitely, you know, dropped my, my shields and kind of was like, okay, I always, if I'm going to do any kind of healing work, I always ask my client and then I do the same. I want to make sure that I am open. I ask my guides to help me stay open, help me receive the healing that I, that I'm, that's being sent. Uh-huh. So I did that and I'm like going about my day and boopity boop. And I could actually feel a, a sense of calmness. Like a, uh-huh. like a floating, to me it was like the energy of floating under the water. I'm one of those weird kids that when I was little, I would go underwater and just float and feel that sensation and look around and then I would get a big breath and go back down because I loved it so much. Right. And to me that was the energetic feeling of uh-huh. what was going on with me while you were doing it. It felt fantastic. I didn't know if I'd be able to feel it because sometimes I've had like distance Reiki and I don't know as if I really felt anything. I could feel the, the effects afterwards. But during uh-huh. this one, I could definitely feel that, uh, that to me it's my pause and it felt good. <laughs> that, uh-huh. If that makes any sense. Yes, definitely. All right. So, okay. Well, when we understand energy we understand that we are all connected energetically. Mm -hmm. And so by obtaining permission to be able to tap in to somebody's energy, which you you can work with them the distance and everything like that, this allows us to actually work as one. So I get to be your proxy, Mm -hmm. and I just work on myself just like I would you if you were sitting right in front of me oh cool but you know and the and the thing about it is is it's just like um i love the distance work because it's not always sometimes reasonable right to be able to take time out of your schedule because of course we're all so busy right you know yeah (laughs) and we have things going on and you know so it's like the distance stuff is always wonderful so that's the best part about energy work is it can be done anytime Mm -hmm. anywhere regardless of what you're doing and so, like you, you were shopping, mm-hmm. and here I was, like, do 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 you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, work on the emotion code, and you're able to carry on your day, and then all I did was write down everything, snap a picture, yeah. and then sent it to you, yeah. you know, and you're like, oh my goodness. So, uh, yeah, it was, so the first thing I remember, so I remember there was like heartache times two, and then effort unreceived was like the first thing I read, and I was like, oh, damn. <laughs> Like, uh-huh. like it really was. Um, I've been going through everybody that listens to the podcast. I kind of try to like document my life and my spiritual life so that others can like. I want them to see that it's not all rainbows and butterflies. <laughs> Having right. a spiritual life um, sometimes can really suck. So I have been going through some serious things from about March on and my lupus got worse so that didn't help so I had right before you did your your deal I had like a complete and total like breakdown (laughs) I had Ah. I mean I had um a lot of things happen in my life I had to to drop the shop I had to you know not do my retail store anymore because of my lupus and the overwhelming feelings for some reason um stress triggers my lupus more than anything Right. So the drive and all that. So anyway, I was kind of mourning that. I was really sad about that. And then I have relationship issues with my dad. And that whole thing was going on about the same time that you were doing the reading. So it was amazing. You put in there heartache at age 40, which I am 40. And that is totally it. Like my, my dad and I, I have had some pretty good realizations and some heartache involving my father. So I was very shocked that you picked up on that because I hadn't, it's not like I told you, hey, me and my dad had some issues. <laughs> right. Well, and see, this is the most beautiful part. Okay. So I have learned how to, um, I've, I've learned how to read people's hands. Mm -hmm. faces and toes that's so cool because and it's really interesting because all of our emotions Mm -hmm. shows up in our hands face and toes really and so so if you wonder where all those little lines come from and why one morning you woke up and what is that oh yeah um well it's because of this Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know and what i have found that um there's a lot of people who are like i really don't want 
to tell you much. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's it's always kind of, I always am, like, very curious, you Mm -hmm. know, because as soon as they will see my sign that says I do face readings, uh-huh. then they immediately read that and look away. They're like, like no, I'm don't. Not gonna, <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to tell a secret, I promise. <laughs> you know, it's right. all still safe. Right. You know? yeah. <laughs> Everybody likes chocolate at 3 o'clock in the morning. No, I'm kidding. And, um, <laughs> so it's, but it's one of those things where it's like, you know, sometimes we do not feel comfortable Right. Just meeting somebody and expressing our innermost turmoil. Oh, yeah. And um, now there's some, so it's like when I look at a person, I can see what's going on with them already. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow, that's as, so cool. In terms of emotional distress or mm-hmm. stress or anything like that. And so then when I tap into the energy, all I'm doing is tapping into your subconscious. That's R- it. Right, yep. And um, so it reveals everything. So you don't even have to tell me anything. I know. Except, but I will tell you. I you thought, just start confessing. Right? <laughs> and I thought that was super cool. And I was like, oh, I'm going to save all my... I wanted to, like, tell you immediately, oh, my gosh, this is what happened. But I'm like, wait, we're doing a podcast episode about this. So I'm going to put it in my pocket and wait for later. <laughs> yes. But, well, and that's exactly what it is. Because it's like when you're starting to release that, you're like, oh, I know exactly where that came from. Oh, yeah. Isn't that amazing? It now, is. Now, beforehand... Yeah. When it's not pointed out, then you're like, I don't know what's wrong with me. Right. You know? Yep. And I and I hadn't, I mean, I knew the, the thing with my dad. I had kind of been going, whatever, I know who he is. I know how he is, and I accept him for who he is. But honestly, I didn't. <laughs> the things he was, right. you know, I finally was able to, to acknowledge. When you put that, it was like staring me in the face. I was like, I am not okay with the things that have happened. I am not okay with the treatment. And I was able to finally go... I'm kind of mad and I feel betrayed and I was able to acknowledge it, which I think helps release things if I at least know what the heck to call it. (laughs) Yes, yes. Yes, and it was fun. You had, um, that first day you had written um, self-doubt and crying and I had literally cried like the whole day before and like half the day before you did the reading that day. I'd like cried for like two and a half days about. So I was like, that's interesting as well. (laughs) Well, and here's, okay, so the interesting thing about crying, the crying that gets trapped yeah. is all the crying that we should have done, yes. but we didn't, yes. you know, and that is like when we get told, you know, you put on your big girl panties, yes. you know, yep. you don't let them see you cry, that shows weakness. Absolutely. Like, hoo, 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 uh-huh. you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> trying to keep it down. Yeah. And that is where it comes from. So oh. it's like when you can release crying, oh. it is a huge relief. And I did. And, <laughs> well, and how wonderful. Because mm-hmm. here's the other part. When we release things energetically, they still have to be worked out physically. Oh, absolutely. They still have to physically get out of the body. Yep. Now, God has blessed us with a couple of entries and exorcists. Yeah. to be able to eliminate all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. So I always tell everybody, unless you want to be vomiting or maybe mm. diarrhea, if yeah. you don't like those, no. then after a session, then go for a walk. Yeah, Work up the heart just a little bit till you can get kind of a sweat going on. Mm-hmm. And that is the quickest way and the healthiest oh, absolutely. to be able to release all of it. Yep. You know, so mm-hmm. it's a great way to release it. And... Because you're feeling much better, you usually feel more motivated to get out there and walk. Absolutely. You know? uh, yes. <laughs> and I, so it's a little background. So I have, I battle depression. And the last, I think probably half of May and all of June was probably the worst I've had it in quite a while. Like I had no motivation to do anything. I was just uh-huh. like, you know what? I kind of lost my faith and, and basically just rolled over and said okay fine I'm done and I was finally and I hadn't I had cried but this like the day you did it I noticed like I cried and cried the day afterwards and maybe the next day mm-hmm. I cried so much and I thought oh my god <laughs> this is like uh-huh. my Reiki attunement I don't want to cry for 21 days like I'm like <laughs> sorry I cried and right. I cried and I cried but then after it was done it felt like I don't know, kind of like after a nice rain when when everything feels refreshed. I like, I felt that. I felt, oh my God. Like I felt, Mm -hmm. I felt better than I had in a really long time. It was kind of like the fog started to lift a little for me. And 
releasing that was priceless for me at that moment. Cause, I mean, I was getting bad enough. My husband's starting to get worried. They didn't want to leave me in the house by myself anymore. He was like, you you are going to go do something to make yourself feel better. <laughs> and right. and it really did. And, and I really started thinking about the things that had happened and how I could I was, I was motivated, like you said, you, the walk helps you motivate. I was motivated more after the first session to actually try to help myself, you know. So I looked up, you know, herbal stuff for um, depression and ordered some things to help me there. I started doing yoga again and kind of starting to get on my feet, which was like, thank you so much because I, my husband was ready to like haul me off and take me to, you know, counseling because he's like, I don't know what else to do. I don't know what to do to help you to get you out of this funk, you know? So it really did. It changed. It really was the catalyst to kind of like kick me in my own ass and get me motivated to, to deal with the shit that I needed to deal with. Well, okay, so let's talk about depression for just a moment, okay? Mm-hmm. Because this is something that, of course, um, you know, this is, has been in kind of the limelight. Yeah. And it's really getting the exposure that it needs now. Oh, absolutely. You know, because depression has always been there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just we've used different terms. So yeah. um, if we look in the book, Feelings Buried Alive, she has all the diagnosis in the back and mm-hmm. the emotional causes that cause these. Right. So I'd like to just read a couple of these to you sure. um, under depression. So the first one is feeling like I'll never be able to be good enough or do enough. Have you ever felt that? That That is completely related to my father. I am a daddy's girl, oh. and all I've ever wanted is to be good enough for him, and I have that I'm never going to be good enough for him thing. Right. Okay, so the next one is feeling it's no use. Absolutely. Oh, so many times I'm like, oh, I could do. Nope, it's no use. I'm not even gonna try. <laughs> right. We get to the feeling of what's the point. Yeah, that's the way it. To me, that that at my lowest point, it was why should I even try to help myself because I'm just gonna feel depressed again. Right. So the next thing is feeling things that are beyond my control. Oh, I'm a control I freak. Have, yep. <laughs> yeah. Well, and even if you are not a person who mm-hmm. wants to control. It's still, there comes a time when you have to feel like you have at least somewhat of a balance. Yes. You know? Yep. I felt like a spiraling down the drain feeling. Like, I have absolutely no control of what's going on in my life. And it was making me feel so disconnected to my faith because I kept waiting for somebody to give me a damn lifeline. And I'm like, okay, well, you're not going to help me? Then, you know. Right. Well, and that's exactly right. Okay. So, how about this one? Anger turned inwards oh absolutely I had a huge (laughs) realization like and I I I after I did after I had my big aha moment I did do a video just so I could share with everybody I I don't even know what oh it was the kitty I was these kitty cats that I've got that bottle kittens one of them Uh had I thought ingested something they shouldn't and it scared me and I was like for some reason that was the the last straw and I my husband was sitting there and he just listened to me yell and scream at the universe and I'm like oh I'm mad at this I'm mad at that and then I stopped I'm like I am most mad at myself because I Uh control all of these things that have happened to me I could have chosen certain things and I just started getting so mad at myself and I did not realize I was that mad at myself until I it just popped out of me (laughs) well and that was exactly my situation yeah you know I didn't realize how much I had participated in my own anger right and no wonder I was feeling bad sometimes that would last for days right you know and so it was just like okay so where do you start to heal it where do you go right you know and unfortunately you you know I worked for the doctors I knew their solution yeah well it went completely against my into my entire upbringing right. we just don't take pills right you know and I medication is good when it can be used properly. Absolutely. There's no, you know, I am not against Western medicine. I love my doctors because, mm-hmm. you know, it, well, it's just the plain fact that if my guts are hanging out, I know the emotion code is not going to put them back in. Exactly. I need a doctor. Yep. <laughs> <You know? laughs> exactly. Yep. And so, but I do believe that when we take care of the emotional side of it, the physical ailments are able to repair mm-hmm. and diminish and we can start enjoying our life. 
Um, that's, yep. you know, the best part. I, so. I, I, this whole process really blew my mind. I was very, I didn't know what to expect because I'd never, I'd never heard of it. So I was just like, well, I didn't even, mm-hmm. I purposefully did not research it or anything. I'm like, I just want to go into this blind so I have no preconceived notion of what it's supposed to be like. So mm-hmm. I didn't even look it up. I just like, I'm just going to experience this. And <laughs> it really, really was amazing. The You pointed out, I'm look, I have like notes. There was at 17, I had heartache and, mm-hmm. and efforts unreceived. So efforts unreceived, clarify to me what that exactly means. Because I have an idea of what it means, but can you clarify that? Sure. Sure. Okay. So let's say <laughs> as we are wanting approval, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. We were like, okay, um, I'll use some of my childhood examples. Um, my mother says, you know, if we clean the house, your dad will be so happy when he gets home. No, so yeah. we would clean the house, and dad would come home, and he was miserable. <laughs> okay. Right. Well, yeah. Effort unreceived. Okay. That's what I thought it was. And it was, you picked up on that. So at 17, I moved away from the house, and I also at 17, I, I had gotten a full ride to uh, play music, to be a music major at UNK. And it was, that's kind of a big deal. Like, to be a a music geek like that, I was kind of courted in my earlier high school years. So I was like uber band geek. And it was a really big deal for me. But to my dad, it was not. Because it didn't have anything to do with rodeo. I I tried that for him and I didn't really like it. So I couldn't do my best because it wasn't with me. So I, I tried to do something else. And for me, that's music. And he did not care. He was just like, whatever, you're out of the house now. Um, I don't have to pay for college. Woohoo. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, so, right. so that I remember just being really upset, really upset. Mm-hmm. And it, and I had not thought about that since tell you brought that up. And I was like, oh, I hadn't even thought about it. I'm like, that was kind of a big deal. And and I and I remember wanting his approval, and he really didn't care. He was like, "I'll load up your crap and help you get to school," and that was the end of it. So, and the and at that that same year, I left. Um, I ended up uh, transferring to a different school, and my boyfriend of like five years, which is weird for high school, but um, we had broke up. So it was a really big year for me, and I'm like, "Holy crap!" Right. I hadn't even thought about that till till you till you mentioned it. So there was a ton of things. It was very accurate. There was, I think at one point you pointed out my original heartache was at 15 and it totally was. That was my first relationship with a boy Mm -hmm. I had ever had. And he was very traumatizing. Um, It was abusive. It was really bad. It ended with cops and it was really not a good experience for your very first, you know, quote unquote love. So... I hadn't thought of that. I hadn't thought of that in years either, but I started thinking about it and I journal because I am I love to write and I started writing about it. I'm like, God, I'm still so pissed off and sad about everything that involved that, that whole thing. So it definitely helped me work through some things that I didn't know I was still upset about. Well, and this is the beautiful part about the emotion code is, is that So it brought up a couple of things Mm -hmm. that you're like, oh, I thought I had worked through. And obviously, you know, so what we would do at this point is we would just schedule another session, Mm -hmm. tap into the energy, and go in exactly for these very specific things things. and release the emotional attachments to the situation, Mm -hmm. which would allow you to, when you think back to it now, Mm -hmm. takes the emotional charge out of it. Right. Cool. Well, we'll definitely need to do that. I've been meditating on it and journaling and trying Mm -hmm. to release as much as I can. I find that I'm doing something that, and I didn't know I was. I have clients that come to me for hypnotherapy or other things. And a lot of times Mm -hmm. if it's a pain client, physical pain, or even if it's trauma, Mm -hmm. I will ask them, who are you without your pain? Right. And and, and people, people hang on to it because they don't know. It's scary to go, okay, well, if I don't have this pain, who in the hell am I? And I realized after all these sessions and some meditating and stuff, I'm like, holy crap, I'm doing the same thing. I, you know, help other people through. Like, I'm hanging on to some of this stuff because I don't know who the hell I am without some of it. (laughs) 
Well, the other thing is, is it is serving a purpose. It is, it yeah. Ser- you know, it serves a purpose of protection, mm-hmm. you know, against things. Well, and this is interesting, okay? So I have a niece, mm-hmm. and she used to have allergies, okay? And I say used to. Okay. So when she was growing up, when her mom would say, you know, you need to go out and mow the lawn, please, it's your turn. Yeah. She would immediately start sneezing and coughing. Her eyes would water. Oh, no. And, of course, you know, they were like, oh, you know, this is not a good thing. No. Well, now that she is older, she's married, she can go out and mow her lawn, no problem. She doesn't have allergies. <laughs> so, I'm like, you know, the body actually will help you fulfill your self-prophecies. Oh, yeah. It's very uniquely yeah. designed. Isn't that beautiful? Absolutely. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the positive thing. I want you and everybody that listens to this to understand that with that, you are never wrong. You are always right. Right. Always. Because you're right. Either you could do it mm-hmm. or that you couldn't. <laughs> exactly. That's the whole thing. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, it's it really is. Right. It is. That's awesome. <laughs> I have to tell my husband that when he gets home. But like, mm-hmm. guess what I learned today? <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so, well, and this is interesting. So, because you have lupus, yes. I would like to read a couple of things of what the emotional causes of lupus is. Okay. If you're good with that. Absolutely. Okay, so lupus, one of the underlying causes, is feelings of deep-seated grief. Does oh. that make sense to you? Yes, I have. Um, I haven't talked about it much on the podcast, but I do not have a relationship with my mother, and it really didn't bother me until probably the last two years. I have really missed having... There's been times in my life I'm like, Jesus, if I had a mom, I could go talk to her about these things, and I don't have them, so I definitely have a bunch and it's funny because my lupus symptoms really started peaking about two years ago Mm. and so what was going on two years ago two years ago I got married well it's been it's been three but two years ago I started thinking about well she started coming she actually lives in the same town I live in and for some reason I started seeing her like it, it's an out of sight out of mind thing and for some reason mm-hmm. she started showing up more like at the store when I would or I'd see her on the street and I think the physical presence of her started me going started making me feel like maybe I should talk to her or maybe we should resolve our issues because there's been times in the last two years that I've had you know I'm I'm we're technically not newlyweds but at that point we were and I was having questions and you know I'm going through pre-menopause and my mom I know went through menopause early so I'm like god if I could talk to my mom she could tell me about all these things that are happening with my body and if it's normal and how she dealt with it there was a lot of body changes um about 30 about 38 (laughs) (laughs) so my (laughs) yes so a lot of things started happening and I and it wouldn't even be like one day I just screwed up cooking one day and I remember thinking I wish that my mom would have told me not to do that because (laughs) I just ruined an entire meal and it really wasn't that big a deal but it sent me into like I went in the bathroom and cried on the floor for like 30 minutes then came back out and made a new meal but it really started bothering me for some reason and I I would guess it was because I was seeing her physically more um that's what I'm guessing I don't know for sure well and at most so what it was happening was it was bringing to your attention Yes. You do need to resolve that. Oh, absolutely. And he, now, so here's the beautiful thing about the emotion code is because we work on ourselves and we only have control over us, mm-hmm. then when you can resolve it on your end, regardless of how they are, mm-hmm. you feel better. Yes. And that is, that's, and that's what great. it's all about. You know, we each have to deal and go through and clear out our own stuff. Mm-hmm. And... When we can clear out our stuff regarding or associated with our parents or siblings or children even, Mm -hmm. you know, or aunts, uncles, whoever is close, how about the school teacher that pissed you off in the fourth grade? (laughs) Right. You know? (laughs) And so there's a lot of stuff that we can do to make ourselves feel better Mm -hmm. because where we lose our power is when we say that person 
makes me feel like crap. Absolutely. <laughs> so the blame is what takes our power mm-hmm. and gives it away. Oh, you for know, sure. and so it's like take it back, take responsibility, mm-hmm. and heal your part in it. And you will find that when you see him, you're not as pissed off. Right. You're able to communicate more freely. Mm-hmm. You're able to accept them a little easier. Right. And the things that used to make you mad, the little things, mm-hmm. they don't even matter anymore. Right. They just don't. You know. And yep. so that's the beautiful part. I know, like, and I don't know how how. I or how comfortable you are talking about spirit guides or anything like that, but I have a very close relationship with my guides. Mm-hmm. And this year has been like I thought 2018 was a you know an evolving, growing shit show of a year, but this year for me um, sort of tops all of them so far. <laughs> I have I have gotten to learn and a ton of lessons <laughs> this year, right. and I know because they've brought it up because. For some reason, I will be meditating in blissful peace and quiet, and all of a sudden, they'll show me my mother, and I'm like, oh my god, seriously, you know, I don't want to deal with that. So I know that this year is something, It's this is the year I need to heal my maternal and my paternal uh, Mm -hmm. trauma. I I think that if I could do that, I would feel better. I know that she would probably feel better if, you know, I can't imagine if my daughter would not talk to me. Like, right. like that, like thinking about my daughter never talking to me, like, phew, it's like a dagger in your stomach, you know? Correct. So I know it went, and the healer in me goes, well, if I could just suck it up and, you know, talk to her and heal whatever wounds we have that I know she would feel better and I would probably heal in the process. So that has been my mindset for about four or five months. I've just kind of been sitting on it because I didn't feel strong enough to, to deal with that because of the other stuff. Mm-hmm. Right. But. Well, so if you were to use the emotion code. Yeah. And you went in there and resolved the emotional links to the relationship with your mother. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Then you would probably be able to get to a point where you could go talk with her. Mm -hmm. And say, you know what? Please forgive me. Yeah. And I think that would be fantastic. If we could do that, that Mm -hmm. would solve a lot of, um, I have a lot of unresolved energy. I feel like when we, like this thing I have with my parents, it's like Mm -hmm. I have pieces of me that are not with me because of it. Right. And I feel like I would be more whole. Well, and the the best way to retrieve, you know, this is the interesting thing because we talk about, you know, and energy work and all sorts of things. Yeah. There's people who do soul retrievals, okay? That's when you leave a piece of your part Mm -hmm. with whoever it is you come in contact. To contact with right and it's basically you know some there's very healthy and you're like okay I don't mind that. right mm-hmm. and then there's these one unhealthy parts that you're like what if I could just have that back for a minute I could clean it and then you can have it back <laughs> <laughs> right <know? laughs> yes absolutely and so even when you're healing the emotional traumas of it that's really what you're doing okay and it's very fascinating how really all these different faucets and modalities really do benefit and work better when you can use them together. Mm -hmm. This is the one thing I love about, you know, doing the emotion code or the energy work or the Reiki or the oracle cards or soul retrieval or past live readings. Right. Because, you know, honestly, it all goes together. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. You know, and it's like, so you're like, okay, I was a, you know, to me, I just kind of think, why not use it all together? Mm -hmm. This is how you really heal the entire soul. And that's what it's really about. It's about coming back to self, getting Mm -hmm. centered, and understanding and loving yourself. And it's very fascinating because, you know, Louise Hay, Mm -hmm. the owner of Hay House, you know, uh, rest her soul. She really says that every emotional trauma, anything in your life is because you don't love yourself. Oh, I that really hits home. <laughs> well, and so it's like when you start going through and you ask yourself, why don't I love myself? Well, all you got to do is go to the mirror, like she suggests, and look in the mirror. And you'll be like, well, I don't like this, and I don't like that, and I don't like this. And yeah. what about this? And where did that come from? And who the heck is looking at me now? Mm-hmm. You know? Right. And so when we start criticizing ourselves, non-stop oh I shouldn't have done that oh why did I do that why wasn't I thinking I should have been smarter Mm -hmm. you know this is all of our self-abuse that we do to ourselves to 
make sure that we're not good enough. Oh, to yeah. make sure that we are unlovable. So, mm-hmm. you know, we constantly seek all that. Yep. So you wonder, how do people become secure? Well, you get rid of your emotional baggage. You learn to love yourself. Right. And, you know, even if you have to start at the point where you're like, okay, I want to learn to like myself. Right. You know, then that's key. That's where you start. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the important thing is, is that you start. That's mm-hmm. the important thing. And know that it is a journey. Now, I have been doing Emotion Code for four years. Mm-hmm. I do it on myself on a very regular basis. I never right. stop Emotion Coding. And mm. everybody says, well, can you get rid of everything? Well, yeah. But, but you gotta keep I probably doing it. <laughs> will have to die. <laughs> right. Because that's when it ends. Right. You know, so until I'm dead... I'm mm-hmm. going to have emotional traumas that happen. I'm going to be mad. I'm going to be sad. I'm going to get my feelings hurt. Right. I'm going to have all those things. But now I have a method in which allows me to be very happy. Um, and I will tell you, um, I taught a class. And I asked the class, I said, how many of you have 365 good days a year? <laughs> no, not one of them raised their hand. No. And so then I'm like, okay, let me ask this a different way. How many of you have one good day a year? Right. You know, and I think we finally started getting some about, uh, they started dropping off what they felt, and I do feel it was an honest answer, about 25 days. Yeah. Now, isn't that just, Yeah. I mean, does that make sense? Yeah. One month wow. out of 12. That's crazy. You have good. <laughs> right? That's crazy. Wow. Now, so with all of this, I will tell you, my bad days are probably maybe in like three or four a year. Oh, wow. Because that... when I start feeling snarly, mm-hmm. then I immediately start emotion coding for like, okay, what's going on with me? Right, yeah. <laughs> because, well, think about it. Do you want to be around somebody who is encouraging and uplifting? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> or do you want to be around somebody who is so sarcastically mean? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and it's like, okay, where is the priority? No, I want the good energy. I want to feel good. Right. I want to help people feel good. And I want them to feel better. Mm-hmm. That's the whole point. That and is so, so it's cool. like, that is my dedication to humanity, is I want to serve to help people feel better. That's awesome. So it's like, being able to share this with you, like, mm-hmm. I was so excited <laughs> to be able to do this, because I'm just like, oh my gosh, Danae, this is, this is wonderful, because I want to help. And Absolutely. by you agree into a session, you allowed me to fulfill my request of wanting to help. So that's right. how we help humanity, you know? Yeah. Oh, uh, yep. One person at a time. Right. Well, and so I'm going to say something to you mm-hmm. that nobody else has ever told you. Okay. And that is, Danae, thank you for being you. Aww. And thank you for taking on the stuff that you have in your life so that this could be a part of service to you Aww. in helping you recover it. So it's like, thank you for being you and acquiring and taking all the hits you did, <laughs> you know, and all the emotional traumas and all the stumbling stones mm-hmm. so that I could help in this fashion because that's what we're truly here for is to help each other. Ah, uh, yes. Well, thank you for saying that. No, I've never had anybody say that. <laughs> ever well so thank you now you have yes <laughs> so, thank you for acquiring all your emotional baggage <laughs> hey i've got lots so <laughs> it's like a, it's like one of those turntables like the have you ever been to like the sushi joints that is a revolving conveyor belt of mm-hmm. that's kind of my emotional baggage it's a revolving conveyor belt of crap so mm-hmm yeah. Well, now you have been lifted of quite a bit of it, yes. so that's a good start. <laughs> Ab- yes, I do feel much lighter. My husband can see a difference in me. Like, I can feel a difference. I, I bullet journal. I'm a crazy bullet journaler. So I track mm-hmm. I track my lupus symptoms. I track my um, my moods. I track everything. That's part of my control freak in me. Um, but mm-hmm. I'm able to see, like, visually in my bullet journal where I'm I'm starting to feel like I'm – I'm over the hump and I'm feeling better and I can actually see like my mood, the colors. I have like little hearts with different colors that mean different things. (laughs) Like Mm -hmm. there's more yellow hearts than, you know, the bad hearts, the bad hearts and I'm sleeping better. Like everything in my journal has improved over the like the last month, well, two weeks to a month or whatever it was. So I definitely can see a, a tangible difference between how I was before and how I am now. 
Well, and how beautiful is that? Yeah, and I, I love it. Like, I love being able to see. I track everything. I cannot help it. So, uh, I was just, I would, before this interview, I was looking at it because I was looking and noticed that the other day. And I look back through May to now, and it's amazing to see the difference in my moods and, um, like the self care. Like, I wasn't, I was too depressed to do any self care. <laughs> so that just perpetuated my cycle. But, like, after your session, I, I noticed, like, I painted, I paint my nails. Paint my nails, that's a self care. So I painted uh-huh. my nails and I took a bath and I started to, like, pick up my normal routine of things. I started to talk to my spirit guides again and really started to get to be feeling me again. Uh huh. So, I appreciate what you do immensely. Well, thank you, because I absolutely love it. I mean, like, I love it. I think about it from the time I go to sleep (laughs) to the time I wake up. That is so awesome. And from the time I wake up till the time I go to sleep. I think about it nonstop. (laughs) (laughs) That is fabulous. Well, how can others, can others get a hold of you? Do you have a website? Do you have Facebook? That way people can actually experience this for themselves. Yes, I actually do. Now, of course, everybody's always on Facebook, and so well, am I. Yep. <laughs> and, um, you know, because, you know, that's where you find the real truth at. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, my page is Directions to Self-Healing okay. on Facebook. And that is where you can get a hold of me. Um, you can message me to set up an appointment. Um, there's My phone number is also listed. Um, okay. I do respond to text messages. So you can always text the phone number, and okay. it's all listed on Directions to Self-Healing Perfect. on Facebook. And um, then, of course, I do have one other Facebook page that is just simply titled Althea. Okay. And that is A-L-T-H-E-A. And, you know, that is where I do live readings and everything like that, where people can come on, they can do a live reading with me, which is the Oracle card. Oh, cool. And, of course, um, you know, whenever they do something like that, it's always action, because I believe action is where it really is a, you have to start. Well, yeah. And so they can do donations for readings, or they can schedule readings, or actually pay for a reading. Perfect. And we can do them over messenger or anything like that it's whatever is convenient if you don't feel like you have enough time you can email me Mm -hmm. and go through paypal i can send you an invoice and you can email me at directions to self-healing at yahoo.com and we can do an email emotion code session oh cool it's wonderful because like you you can still go shopping and have the work done that's so you know. cool. Yes, I think that's fabulous. I will make sure that I have all of your contact info in the um, show notes. That way when somebody uh, needs, if they can't get you, if they are driving when they're listening to this, they can always uh, check the show notes when they get to a safe spot <laughs> and write it all down. Wonderful. Uh, cool. Denise, this is absolutely wonderful to be able to, you know, share all of this information. And thank you for having the podcast and letting people know. No, thank you for coming on. I I think this, my goal is to share as much information about how to make us all better humans as I possibly can. (laughs) Well, I think you're doing a heck of a job and congratulations. Well, thank you. You are welcome. Again, I want to thank Althea so much for the beautiful interview and for sharing her gifts and her knowledge with the rest of us. I know this wasn't a super witchy episode, but I am more than my witchy side, and I feel like it's important for me to share that stuff with you. I'm all about, you know, anything holistic that can help um, help us heal, help us become better humans, and I want to share that with you. If anybody needs to get a hold of her, I definitely will have those contact the contact information for her in the show notes. If anybody would like to get a hold of me, you can email me, Danae at DanaeSweet.com. I am on Twitter, uh, Danae underscore sweet underscore. You can get me on Instagram, at Witchy Woman Podcast. And on Facebook, I have a page called Witchy Woman Podcast. And we have a cool group. It is a closed group. That way, um, others can't see what you're posting if you're not out of the broom closet yet. You have to just hit join, and I will approve your your request to join. And we share cool stuff in there. You can talk about things. Whatever you want to talk about is a safe place. So, I also have a Patreon page. It's called, it's a patreon.com forward slash witchy woman podcast. 
there is a subscriber page, basically. Um, I have some levels of subscriptions that you can click on and there's different benefits for each, but basically it's a spot where I can provide you with exclusive content. I'm going to be having some video interviews and the video will be posted there and nowhere else. I will have the, the audio though will be on the podcast, um, but the video will be shown there. Uh, I'm going to do some 101 stuff. So we talked about it in the live video um, last week, and I think it's a cool idea to do some videos, like how to do uh, a, a spell jar or um, how to set up your book of shadows, things like that. I just thought it would be I thought it would be really cool to do that. Also maybe show you different tools and how to use them, but all of that content is going to be on Patreon. So um, for as little as a dollar, you can subscribe. Um, I think the other levels are five and 10, and at 10, you get uh, a witchy gift every quarter. So anywho, thank you for all my Patreon subscribers. I appreciate you so much. I am working on saving to get a little bit better equipment so that I can have some um, offsite interviews. So, crossing my fingers that I'll be able to get that soon because I do want to get off site and interview some cool people so that you guys can hear some more awesome video or interviews and things. So, anyway, <laughs> I'm babbling again. So, until next time, stay witty. Bye.